Good evening, Stephen. Good evening, Joe. And welcome, welcome to, to Bitches in, in the Buckle. We apologize ahead of time for not doing this live, as we did have Mercury in retrograde this whole month, and it decided to play... Let's make... Stephen's life miserable. Let's make Bibs our bitch this week. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> we ended up coming to Stephen's house today, and, well... Um, well, the whole thing is, is it plugged in is not the question, because it will never be plugged in at <laughs> Stephen's house. <laughs> Electricity, what? Nah. It's, exactly. It's the, uh, with Mercury in retrograde, folks, it is just crazy for a lot of people. Uh, we have a gerbil on a wheel, and it's running to create electricity right now. So, we are pre-recording this, and for those who hear it, which probably most of the time you will hear it like this anyway. So, we'll see how this goes, and if it works better, we will keep it this way from here on out. We have third world country immigrants out back churning butter to create electrons. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, I, I, I heard butter, so I was all about the butter, and of course uh, butter... And do we, uh, yeah, we, today is this week's flavor of the week is called Lobster, brought to you by the flavor Butter. butter. <laughs> yeah, this week's flavor is Butter. And we, have you had anything interesting this week happen to you? Um, as a matter of fact, I have. Dun. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is Bitches in the Buckle. This is Bibbs. Glad you could join us. Um, yes, this week has been very interesting, very, um, eventful, um, probably starting with Coretus. Um, as some of you know, um, Coretus is the men's spirituality group here, uh, in town in Oklahoma City. Um, I am by default its leader, and we were supposed to... your leader. <laughs> and we were supposed to um, have our meeting this past Saturday night, which we did, by the way. Um, but we were supposed to have a, a ritual um, connected to our meeting um, this past Saturday night. And it was supposed to be le led by one of our members. And me being the brilliant overlord master dominant person that I am, I had the brilliant idea of having a backup, um, of always having a backup, having one person lead the ritual and the next person um, assist with the ritual. Uh -huh. Brilliant, Stephen. I know. That's why I am the evil overlord. <laughs> and as you are, because I saw my husband, poor Chris, working on the backup plan and working on that, uh, the ritual, just in case, which I heard went off pretty well. Right. Um, what happened was, to catch you guys up, um, our person who was supposed to lead the ritual, um, MIA. Nobody heard from him. Nobody knew where he was. Nobody... Um, he was basically, like, flintstoning it, only without the cool gadgets, no one, he was like, um, he was like Doctor Who in the TARDIS. In which, what, which episode? <laughs> well, no, because he, he was like, he's like, he's like, he was like Doctor Who in the TARDIS going to his next adventure. You never knew where he was going. I'm not a Boobian, so... He I, has some idea, but usually it ended up in the wrong place. But right. But we're right where he needed to be. Or, even even better an analogy, he was like Scott Bakula in Quantum Leap. With, in between leaps, he left, and in that space when he was leaping he, he to another was, body, he, he had stuck no in limbo. Eyes. He had no idea. So basically, the person who was supposed to leave the ritual was in between bodies, and nobody knew which body he was going to land in. That's a better. Question. Yeah, that, and that works pretty well. Yeah. So anyway, um, Chris wrote a kick-ass ritual uh, because he's a kick-ass kind of guy. And don't tell me that. That's why I married him. Yeah. And, um, 
and, and the ritual went off without a hitch, and it was wonderful, and it was beautiful, and it was my first Samhain ritual without um, women involved, and I have to say it was it, it was pretty darn awesome. So um, that was one thing that happened this week. Um, the other thing that's happened, um, Mercury retrograde-ish wise, is my phone has decided at random times just to shut off. It's like it'll be it'll be charged 100. percent I'll take it off the charger and then it'll say, "Oh, okay, I'm done now," and it'll shut off, or it'll shut off and it's at 50 percent, or you know, hmm. it's at 75 percent, and you know, it might be a battery issue, but I'm blaming it on Mercury retrograde. Damn you, Mercury! Sounds like ba- I was gonna say it definitely sounds like a battery issue. Has it been overheating? Getting really hot in your pocket? Yeah. That's a battery. Oh, and... Sorry, the, give it to the techie. <laughs> yeah. And the other thing is that I got a ticket this week, which is Again? so... No, well, no, 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 no. That was two weeks ago. Did, that, did we tell this story already? Yeah, you told this story. I was like, and thinking, you got another ticket? No, I did not get another Ooh, ticket. Oh, boy. But, um, <laughs> I hate to have your insurance. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so Mercury um, was in retrograde, and it definitely kicked my ass that way. And let's see. Um, before before you continue, I want to go ahead and say the the two songs that you heard in the background, folks. If you are interested, or by the Blue Spa, they are a Reiki. Uh, it is a Reiki uh, CD. You can get them on Amazon Prime uh, if you would like to. I do have it available on my site at ClawWritings.com. So uh, getting that add in there for them. Uh, letting us use their music because we got we probably should put that in there since uh yeah you're probably right you're absolutely you know. in fact no probably about it you're absolutely right if we're going to use See? somebody's music we need to give them credit give so, them credit yeah. and our and the song that we started out with was written by me and Steve and just sort of like yes yes and the, we'll business, be the buckle s- theme was very what, what what would you call that um ad lib it was very okay. It was very Frank Zappa in his experimental music phase. I wasn't experimenting with anything at the time. <laughs> I promise. Um, if you ever wanted to watch something that will blow your mind, have you laughing out loud, and have you saying, what the fuck, all at the same time. Go to What um, the Fuck Wednesday. What? Yeah. Google uh, or YouTube um, Frank Zappa's first um first Tonight Show appearance. He basically plays a bicycle. That's scary. He plays a bicycle. So it, it, it's like it, it's like Joe and I kind of mind melded and we created this this beautifully terrifying uh, <laughs> Awfully wonderful! <laughs> Hilarious! Uh, um, collaboration. Yes. So uh, and we will not put that on a CD for anybody to enjoy. We promise. Maybe not yet. Well, well, let's not promise that, because I think it's funny. I think it's hilarious. We yeah. should do a CD with that on there. <laughs> Repeat it over to, and over. To op- at least open up the CD, you know, uh, maybe a greatest hit, maybe a Bibbs greatest hits. A greatest hits album. Funniest moments from Bibbs. Bibbs. Top 25, you know, kind of like what they do on, uh, I don't know if you ever got to see, uh, whose line is it with, anyway, with, uh. Um, Drew Carey and where they had Some... Wayne uh, and at the very end they had like the 25 top oh yeah, yeah 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 it was like with the credits <laughs> yes yeah, it was yeah. hilarious that was great stuff uh, but about your ticket how fast were you going um I got a ticket I, I was actually it's always good to hear that a vast virus database has been updated my viruses always get updated daily on a daily basis oh um, Chris has just joined us. Hi, Chris. Hello. Hi, Chris. Um, I wasn't driving fast. In fact, um, I was driving with expired tags. And so I, I was actually driving well within the speed limit, um, on the highway. And I was, I, I had expired tags, which I fixed today, by the way. You can actually take that ticket in as long as you fix it and they'll write it off. No more paying. Or at least reduce it. Or yeah, at least yeah exactly. It Get that taken care of. Cleveland County cops don't stop me again. It's fixed. Um, Just take it into the courthouse. Show them it's done. Take them and show the receipt. Was it city or county? Oh, it was Cleveland County. I was. Oh, wow. uh, oh you're. For for those of you who are um 
who, who don't know, um, Cleveland County um, and Oklahoma County. Um, Cleveland County um, is basically just south of Oklahoma City. Um, and Oklahoma City is, of course, Oklahoma County, and it's separated by a bridge. Guess where I was stopped? On the bridge. No. Right before I got to the bridge. It was like I was... I was making the, I was almost on the ascent, and all of a sudden, boom, Yeah, that's where they usually get you. I actually got now. caught speeding yeah. in Oklahoma. Yeah, yeah they, uh, I was going with this rate of traffic, and they got me. And going from Midwest City. But uh, the rate of traffic was still speeding, and they just got me on... That's, uh, you were the unlucky it, one. I was the unlucky one, but everybody else was slowing down as soon as they saw the cop pulling me over. <laughs> Thanks. Anyway, point being, the cops actually, most of them here, as far as I know, have been pretty nice. I mean, of course, I get to meet a couple of them in, uh, over my last summer, uh, working over at the forensics, taking my forensics classes. And uh, we had, they were getting trained for their uh, fleet certification. Okay. And Chris saw like 50 cars over at the forensics building and he's thinking, oh no, something's happened. Because I don't know if you're aware of this, but last, last year we had a bomb scare uh, over at UCO where someone left a suitcase that was sitting out. Oh, probably, yeah. Some idiot left a suitcase. Yeah. Anyway, Chris thought that something had happened. He's like, are you okay? You know, it's all like 50 different cars from all over. I think, oh, yeah, but if there wasn't, if there was a case where I'd be having a problem, I still would be okay, <laughs> you know? So, yeah, it's as far as I know, it's, I'm outside of the cop who pulled me over. I've not really had any trouble with it. And I, neither have I, neither have I, you, you, you know, so, again, Cleveland County cops, don't pull me over. And, and <laughs> if you want to think. I will forewarn Appreciate you, if you pull me over, I will probably be the last one, because I will probably end up making you laugh by asking if I could borrow your handcuffs. Mm. I did that once at a restaurant, and I had the cops hooting and hollering. It was great. I got that, a good tip that night. You know what? <laughs> that, I believe that only works for chicks. Oh, it works for guys, too. I'm, I'm, uh, I Gabriel. Can't. I couldn't imagine walking up to a cop and saying, hey. Can I borrow your handcuffs? Can I borrow your handcuffs? I don't think it would really work for you unless the cop was, you know, really either a good looking, a good looking chick (laughs) or very. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) Uh, You know, but you know, blueberry. (laughs) (laughs) I I was like, yeah. I think I'm going to keep that. All right. All right. So how was your week? My week was fine, except for the fact that, you know, it's, uh, it was, I'm having a hard time getting back in the swing of going back to school after having a fall break. Right on. I love breaks, but it's when they end that drives me nuts. Right. It's not the fall, it's the landing. Yep, exactly. (laughs) Hey, last night I had to spat with, um. Uh, insomnia, which kind of goes with some territory, but that happens to about a good 49% of the United States of America, you know, 69% of Americans actually deal with insomnia. So it's, it's happening to 100% of me, so yeah, you and I are right there together for some reason. It's yeah. a hormonal imbalance usually, but uh, with that being said, it was most, I didn't want to go into class because I didn't want to fall asleep in it because I love my trigonometry and I love my computer science class, even though sometimes the teacher doesn't really like me in the turn, I don't think, but hey. Um, my estrogen levels have been kind of high. I bet. <laughs> uh, in fact, I actually, in fact, I actually got a shot for testosterone. They gave me a testosterone shot. Did they? Yeah. Supposedly, it helps with a woman's libido. <laughs> so women, if you are having a little trouble there, go to the doctor. They'll give you some testosterone. You'll be up and ready. So how's that working for you, Chris? He's keeping well. silent. <laughs> <laughs> Usually by the time we get home at night, we're so I tired know. to do anything. <laughs> <laughs> Although the problem is it's at the wrong time when I'm ready. Mm-hmm. Chucks. Okay. You know, if I had Moving an hour on. for lunch, it'd be great. <laughs> yep. Tell me about it. All I right. Uh, anyway, point being, 
Hey, we have a cool show for you today. We do. Um, I um, I know I have news around here somewhere, and it's all good news, um, by the way. Um, I know that the last... I guess two or three episodes that we've had have been all about crazy people saying that they were witches um, and us screaming at the heavens, why? Why? Why are you doing this, John? <laughs> no, why? We're not them. But actually, all my um, news tonight, and I can't find my news sheet anywhere. It's been a crazy day. I've been gone all day long, and it's just been a crazy day, and I have, and I can't find anything anymore. But um, my, um, oh, my news was... Um, if you haven't heard about it, it's called Pagan Pride Day, um, and um, the Pagan Pride Project, mm -hmm. um, I believe, is um, is it national or international? It is, as far as I know, it is national. Okay. But I am not. Don't quote me on that unless I'm right. Okay. Um, and um, the Pagan Pride Project, um, well, it certainly is national because that was what I was going to talk about. Um, Pagan Pride Project. Um, has what they call Pagan Pride Day, um, and it usually happens um, between, um, I want to say the month of September is when it happens. All the way to October, sometimes the end of October for different Right, cases. I want to yeah. say like, you, you know, around Maybon time all the way through to Samhain, probably. Yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah, around there. So, anyway, um... My news today was um, I found all these articles. Um, oh, let me let me also back up and say that um, each pagan, each organization underneath the pagan pride um, um, umbrella um, has to reach out to if they're going to do a pagan pride day and they're going to be underneath the um, pagan pride project umbrella. They have to reach out to local media. Mm -hmm. and ask them to come and cover it. Well, that's how I've been finding these stories. There have been stories from Illinois, um, New Mexico, California, lots of stories from California, um, Ohio, mm -hmm. I want to say, um, and one other place that I saw this past week. Um, but anyway, it really is nationwide. Um all over the country, you can find um, a Pagan Pride Day in your, you know, in your, in, yeah, in your neck the of least. the woods, you know, and it, it's a good thing because not only... They even have one in Fargo, North Dakota. Fargo, North Dakota, you it, see. Yes, exactly. They have a Pagan Pride Day up in Fargo. In Fargo. Yes, exactly. How is that for an accident? Horrible. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're uh, acting over there, I tell you, you're yeah, just pretty yeah, bad. Yeah, it's it's pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Anyway, um, so for those of you out there um, who, ha who who may not necessarily be um, pagans or not necessarily um, be witches or heathens or wiccans or any of that, um, any of that. For those of you who, who are just curious, you know, as to who we really are, um, I would strongly suggest you um, going um, to good old Google and typing in Pagan Pride Project, um, and there's bound to be... A Pagan uh, Pride Day where you're at. Right, a Pagan Pride Project... Um, Pride Day where um, in your neck of the woods. So, and for those of you that um, perhaps, you, you know, they're perhaps feel like you're the only one. I know that um, many, many um, pagans um, suffer from this when they're baby witches, that they think that they're the only ones, you know, or they or, you know, their friend that they're, you know, studying with are the only ones. And then they just get the ideas from, you know, movies like, and I know, Charmed, well, it's one of your favorites. Love Charmed. It's not exactly accurate. Neither was the craft, but it was it's one Wonderful. of my all time favorite movies. <laughs> However, um, on the other side, did you know that Witch Hat is the same way? Witch Hat is national. Yes, that that that's a great yes. And right now, I do know that the uh, our Witch Hat Society we are meeting on the second of November to do our salon ritual. 
Blair, yes. It is being led by a Catholic. Which a is Christian, awesome. ladies and gentlemen. Which is Can you awesome. believe that? And for those who are want, would like to come, it is a potluck, and we will not force you to eat live chicken, at least on your first visit. Um, <laughs> Still make lollies. I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a ritual, sorry, it's a remembrance service for those who have passed on. Right on. Uh, and I think it's awesome that Dale is leading it because it shows that we can coexist, folks, with other religions. Right. And sometimes, again, as I say, the best, pagans, the best Catholics make good pagans. Hey, but, they hey, sure do. Know what? To each his own. Right. And I think it's amazing what Dale's going, doing to yeah. reach for interfaith. Right. You want to do interfaith, folks? That's how you do it. Right. Um, so uh, I would strongly encourage those of you that are in the Oklahoma City area, um, if you're um, in town on the 2nd of November, to stop by Channing um, Cups, which is Channing Unitarian Universalist. You can always find it on, and it's going to be starting at 6 o'clock. Bring a, bring a dish. Bring a dish, yes. To share. Um, also, bread bowls are always really good. Um, you Red know, Bulls. Red Bulls rock, because you might have soup. Oh, uh, um, yeah. As well as, uh, you won't, you know, there's not going to be any talk of, you know, our, you know, our religion, their religion, whatever religion. It's just going to be, you know, good old-fashioned Oklahoma fun. Especially since we have a Catholic um, actually running the show that oh, yeah. night. Uh, I just think that that's wonderful. I was there at Bill's when he came to pick up the incense and candles. So yeah. that was pretty cool to see him come in and, you know, pick up, you know, a box of candles and... Um, but not so. Yeah. Right. So November second, um, six o'clock. It's up in Edmond. Um, look up um, Channing Universalist. Um, some Channing. Um, uh, Channing Universalist. Unitarian Church. It Unitarian is on, Church. Um, it's in Edmond. It's in Edmond. So you know, for those Google of us who have GPS, <laughs> Google it. GPS. Get there on November second at six o'clock. We'll love to have you. Yeah. And, um, and the other the thing, and, and, and the other thing that um, before we move on from this subject is, and and Joe, you touched um, on it a little bit, is that um, the Witch Hat Society is a nationwide um, mm -hmm. project as well. So, for as much bad publicity that we as um, you know, pagans, heathens, Wiccans, earth-based religion people um, have to muddle through and scream at the top of the lo our lungs. We are not that. Um, for as much as we have to do that, um, there are resources out there for people that are looking, um, truly looking for like-minded individuals. Um, Pagan Pride Project being one and um, Witch Hat Society being the other. So um, by all means, do due diligence and look those things up and um, educate yourselves um, properly on the way of, um, of mm -hmm. our religion. So that's it. Also, yeah. that we do have a couple of birthdays. I know we missed, a, missed one um, a little bit. Um, birthdays coming up here soon here. Okay. Can just... My brother's birthday was on the 13th. And um, we did sing that. Oh, that's right. We did. Did you hear it? We did. I don't know. I haven't heard from him. I um, I, I, I haven't heard from him, so I'm not sure. Um, who else's who, who else birthday? Is I know there? last Thursday we had Karina. And right, coming Karina, up pretty soon is uh, we have Harlan coming up, too. Okay. Um, they, uh, also we had, um, uh, John's, uh, sister, uh, Marta, whose birthday is, uh, who has passed. I'm not sure if it was recent or later, but I do know there was a mention of her birthday. Oh, John Demarest's, um, um birthday was Saturday, so... Um, John Demarest Jr., happy birthday to you, my friend. Uh, thanks for coming to Coretta Saturday night. You were awesome. This song goes out to you guys. This is the pagan birthday song. I didn't even know we had a pagan birthday song. 
Every birthday song they have is pagan, but you know. No, no, no. I seriously, I, I, I had no idea that there was a such thing as a pagan. It's by uh, Ziza. It's by whom? Ziza. Ziza. Z double E Z A. Ziza. It's like T double E double R double I double F double I double C C C. So apparently there is a pagan happy birthday song which you can hear in the background over us. So talking. for those who are having a birthday coming up and who have had one passed, a very happy birthday to you. Yes. And I do not know mine is coming up on the first. So uh, yes. I'm celebrating mine on Halloween. And we will have some sort of hazing ritual on bibs. Haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> Probably. I'll have to wear some cheesy hat and <laughs> sing, hold my hands, hold my breath and sing Kumbaya. Something like By that. By pinching my nose and doing rocks. But with that being said, happy birthday to all the pagans out there who yes. have celebrated and blow out your candles in one breath because if you don't, you will not get your birthday wish. Right. And birthday fairies do like to see birthday wishes. Sometimes birthday fairies can be very mischievous. Fairies. Okay. Moving on. Um, I guess the next thing on the agenda this evening um, is um, your story. We talked mm -hmm. about Chris's story two weeks ago, um, and we talked about men, uh, the men's spirituality uh, within um, paganism, and then last week we talked about my story, um, which was awesome, by the way. <laughs> yes, it was. Absolutely phenomenal. Thank you. I love it. And we had people showing up at the door. That and was, we had people that was pretty the awesome, door. too. You know how yeah. else could that, that happen to yeah. a radio show? Yeah. So this week it is um, Joe's turn um, underneath the spotlight, um, and I'll hand the mic over to her and have her tell us her story. Well, um, I guess it's never easy telling your story as far as when it comes to pagan, how, how you became pagan. Um, everybody goes through the metamorphosis like you did and like Chris did. Hmm. Um, but I think for me, there was a big, huge opening when I was a young kid. Um, I'm not going to say I became a pagan when I was seven years old because I was still being trained by my parents to be a Bible devout Christian and Bible thumping Christian because I did that for up until I was probably a about 18. But I did challenge my faith a lot. Um, because during my parent, um, this is going to get kind of bold. So for those ahead of time, I'm glad there's tissue here because I'm probably going to end up crying. My, Stephen might too. <laughs> yes. Uh, which is not manly. Uh, crying on bibs is like crying on Oprah <laughs> and sobbing into a lean cuisine. It's very, very cliche, yes. <laughs> but um, my parents during a divorce, um, uh, my mom had me accuse my dad of sexual abuse. Oh. And uh, she used me as a pawn. She said, if you tell mom, uh, the cops, that your daddy had been touching you, mommy and daddy will get back together and live happily ever after. Well, I saw daddy less and less and nothing more than a seven-year-old child who want to see her family back together. Um, didn't know what touching me meant. Told the cops exactly that. Found out what it was at seven. My youth and innocence ripped away. Came to my dad, who had now officially been tainted forever for ministry. Um, after going back to cops and telling them my dad would never do such an awful thing. I went to him and I said, Daddy, is God sleeping? If God loved me so much, you say that he died. Why would he do this to us? Why would he allow this to happen? And that um, ended up changing a lot of my thought because every time I started questioning, what if? What if this? Well, if God could do this, well, what happened to the people of Nod? And so I started getting kicked out of Sunday school because I would ask questions. I started throwing out the Bible, like, but the Bible says this, and you guys are supposed to follow, we're supposed to follow the Bible. Well, after a while, I went back and forth. And then when I turned 18, or about 6, 17-ish wise, um, I met a friend who told me I'd make a very good pagan. I would make a very good Wiccan. I said, what do you mean? And I was like, 
I, I don't I was not sure if I should have been offended at the time or insulted, but he said there's a white light around you. There's a white light that's absolutely gorgeous. And you uh, would make a very good pagan. His name was JR. Not Tolkien. Uh, but uh, we called him the Flaming Phoenix from the D and D together. Was he gay? No! <laughs> No, he wasn't. Um, there was a lot of question. Actually, he and I dated for a little bit, like about a week. Um, but um, it was more of I got introduced to um, a, a friend who I got introduced to the pagan side, and I, I it was very opening. I never I felt very warm there. Um, mm-hmm. And for the life of me, I don't remember. Val. Valkyrie Pendragon was her name. And uh, I guess it was my most... Oh, I would say, you know how it is where you are thrown out of the home and you just go right into partying? My dad was very... My home life was very sheltered. Let's put it this way. No, no partying, no going... I was lucky to go to a dance and then come home right afterwards. Okay. And so when I met Valkyrie, it was my first experiment, uh, first meeting of a person who had a sex change. Uh huh. And I was, I had moved out of my parents' house. From man know, to woman, a woman to man. Man to woman. Okay. Valkyrie's cool. Um, and she got married. Oh. Uh, recently, so congratulations if you're listening. Congratulations, in. Valkyrie. Um, but they kind of showed me that it was a very friendly society. Always welcome. My first time, my second time kissing a woman. Uh, hmm. Yes, there was a couple times. Uh, for my mother-in-law, sorry. <laughs> but that's out of my system. I'm in love, deeply in love with your son. Don't worry about that. <laughs> um, but at that point, it was just more of what am I? So now it's things are changing. That mold has been set. And what happened was JR put some, like, threw a rock in my, my stream, if you will. Because I said, hey, come to church with me. You know, wanting to do the good old Christian thing. And he goes, okay, I'll tell you what. You answer this question logically, because no other Christian has been able to do it. And I'll come to church. He asked me, if God's so powerful, why does he need armies? And I had to think. So let me get back to you. I said, uh, well, according to the Bible, eh, I guess God said had no other gods before me, so he must be afraid of the other gods. (laughs) He came to church with me that week. (laughs) Okay. Hey, it was a logical explanation, but then it came to the fact, if God's afraid of the other gods, are there really other gods out there? (laughs) Hmm. Hey. Good question. Good question. Uh, So, point A to point B, JR really did throw the kick into it. And he told me what was going to happen the summer before I was raped. He knew. He he didn't want it to happen, but he said, I'm going to forewarn you, something really bad's going to, I feel something really bad's going to happen to you this summer. Well, I started reading into Druidism. That's where I felt the pull. I was very big into the earth bone. I figured if I'm going to at least go into this, I'm going to go into it slow and study and see how things, you know, see what works for me. Okay. Well, everything was great up until I saw a squirrels having a threesome. Squirrels having a threesome. Yes, I was becoming very close to nature, and I kind of shied back after that. I was like, um, too much, too <laughs> fast, too soon. Okay. Uh, no, it was like, you know, squirrel on squirrel on squirrel action. So no, I got that. Like, I've never you know, seen that. I'm intrigued. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably a mate situation where the female doesn't eat, and it was male on male action, and you know it was summertime, and squirrels can get rather well, squirrely. Of course, it was summertime. <laughs> <laughs> and there's one time at French camp, <laughs> but it was just like it was too much too soon. So I shied back as soon as I saw that because I was like, okay, but that's like getting a little too close to you know that's a little too too close, close to, to nature, nature for me. sure. And I'm not yet ready for this, but, um... By the way, I've never seen a squirrel threesome. Can you consider yourself lucky? I never want to see one ever again. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a little too much. But, um... When I was a kid, kind of 
kind of backing up the brakes a little bit. When I was a kid, I had every sort of handle when I was growing up, from cats to birds. I taught a bird how to talk. Um, at 12 years old, I snapped my elbow back in the socket. No, no normal 12-year-old can do that. Um, so there was kind of like the finicky, was I here before? Um, of course, you know, at eight years old, I broke my arm and had to ride down on a horse. That was not pleasant, and I was crawling the whole way. Point being, um, I started having my my metamorphosis slash change about 18, 19. Okay. And then what happened for me was after I moved out permanently from my parents' house, and I became homeless for two years. Um, I started working with a person whose nickname was Shadow Wolf. Um, I don't know if he'll be, be uh, safe for me calling him by his full name, so I'm just going to keep it a Shadow Wolf on huh? air. Okay. Um, for safety of myself. Uh, but Shadow started teaching me uh, something about a triangle. Triangle, and then the triangle had, you know how you see the shapes of the triangles and how many triangles are inside the triangle? Mm-hmm. But there was three triangles, and then you had the gray in the middle, saying that there's people to pr- protect the people from being completely light and completely dark, and that something is always meant for the balance, and he was one of the balancers. And um, he started telling me about how to channel energy, but I didn't really understand <clears throat> it at the time. Sorry. I'm so Bless sorry. you. Mind you, this was at a homeless shelter, so you can't ever take anybody's face value at a homeless shelter. Right. But I did kind of pull a few things, uh, which for when I ended up in Nashville, I was homeless for two years, which brought me from Oklahoma to Nashville. Uh, my parents turned their back on me, um, made a bad, dumb decision, and was left to sleep underneath a bridge in Nashville. But... I found out that I could use energy to shield myself and to hide, um, which on the street is very necessary. Right. Um, especially as a woman by yourself, because a lot worse things could have happened to me than just being raped in, at 18. I mean, and I went through some shit. Um, I was held at knife point, told to do a lot of stuff, but um, I think coming out of it, I'm going through all the crap that I've gone through, I'm relatively normal. Um, but I think that was the turning point, because I started going by Arctic. People knew me as Arctic, because I have a, uh, which I now know as my guide, one of my spirit guides is a, a white wolf. But they started knowing me as Arctic because I could hide like a wolf. And that was my first, I, I suppose you could say my first attachment to a totem animal. And which was very blessed that she came to me at the time I needed her the most. Because it it always happens when your totem animals come to you, is when you need them. And they're there to guide you. Um, Now, Arctic is not one of the nicer sides of my uh, my totem. Uh, She's very, as far as wolves, she's pretty aggressive. And so I kind of hide her away. Which, you know, people say is multiple personality, but no. She's been a guide and very, very there. And I'm glad she's no longer needed. (laughs) But there was that change where I started becoming pagan, pagan. And then... um, Not pagan-esque. Not pagan light. Pagan, pagan. Pagan, pagan. (laughs) Uh, Well, you know, Nashville, you kind of have the... uh, And you might say Athena was watching out for me, too. I had the... uh, the temple. The temple, yeah. Yeah, there's a temple there, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I had the, uh, you know, everybody wants to go back to Nashville to see it. I'm like, I- I've seen it enough. I don't want to go ever go back. As much as I love Nashville and seeing the temple, I'd rather go see the real Greece one because, you know, I had enough of Nashville for my life. Mm-hmm. Sorry those who are turning in from Tennessee, but, mm-hmm. you know, when you're homeless there and hungry, there's a lot of difference. Oh, and by the way, FYI, sidebar. Um, I have not had my fill of Nashville because I have yet to meet Amy Grant and ball like a baby. So, and tell her she was an in, uh, an amazing influence in my life and um, how she continues to be an amazing influence in my life. And How is it she's amazing all together? You love her. I love her. She can do no wrong. 
Um, I love her to death. She is wonderful. Obviously. Amy Grant, if you are turning in, uh, the uh, autographed picture can be sent to <laughs> dot dot dot. <laughs> um, but I also, dot OKC at gmail dot com. <laughs> uh, yes, exactly. Uh, no, but if I were really to go back, I would say, say BB King's is phenomenal there, mm. and uh, yeah, an amazing dance floor. They will, they do have some good music there. Uh, but when you're not homeless, uh, right. <laughs> it's, it's worth seeing. Um, the reality was the totem started coming, um, little bit by little bit. Few few years later, I met the dragon, um, which was after I had moved to Fargo from um, Fargo? Fargo, North Dakota. Uh, but what was really kind of the tie down is when I moved into Lindy and Lindy's house. I was actually, my parents didn't want to deal with me when I moved home. They put me into adult, um, the best way I can say it is they put me in adult supervision. Uh-huh. An adult nursing home, if you will. Uh-huh. Lindy Lindy was Mormon, as Mormon can be, but when I was trying on different, like, okay, what faith fits me, you know, I was kind of mm-hmm. going through that crisis, and she goes, it's okay, that's, pre- that's normal, and I, my parents were telling me that was abnormal, I was insane, Lindy Lindy was there, uh, and usually Mormons are like, no, you have to be Mormon, but Lindy was probably like, this is normal, what you're doing is normal, you're finding out what fits you, mm-hmm. and so when I kind of was flexing of what kind of pagan am I? What pagan am I? Am I really a pagan? Is this really, you know, what am I dealing with here? You know, kind of going back through counseling and everything like that is, um, it just turned out that I tried to go back to Christianity. And I, I did because I figured I'm coming home. I probably should be with my parents and my parents' religion. It did not sit. It did not sit at all. Mm-hmm. And Lindy went to, when my parents were telling me I was crazy, Lindy went to war. She said, she is not. She is not crazy. I love the woman to death. I, I, if you're turning in, Lindy, thank you. Um, but she did an amazing job of letting me keep my books in the house. Um, I didn't have an altar. I didn't know how to make an altar, uh, more or less keep one at that time. But it was more of, I was just starting. I, it was... I was able to be me for the first time and not have to wear a mask. But even then, I felt like I still did. Um, That's one of the few things us pagans have a trouble with, is that if you're in a situation, especially like myself, where you're a pastor's child, you have to hide a lot. You have to shield a lot. And who you truly are might not come until you leave the household. And I, 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 there's part of me who envies people who have the ability to have parents who are so accepting of them as they're younger to choose their religion and choose their faith that, you know, my dad keeps on saying, well, I let you choose it. But today he still tells me that I'm wrong, that I'm wrong. And I'm at the point of telling him, I'm not going to ask you to change yours. Don't ask me to change mine. But what changed for me is when I moved to Oklahoma again, and, um, well, up in North Dakota first off. I met the the North Dakota witch hat group, if you will, uh, pagan group, and Thomas Putton um, and his wife at the time uh, kind of led me onto the tarot, which I got very, I got curious, and that's where I got my first deck um, of um, cards. Uh, I was in tarot. I went through the oracle side mm-hmm. and um, started with pendulums way before that. But it was just at 18, I started with pendulums. Even though I was a Christian, I used a pendulum. Um, Christians can still read tarot, folks. It's not something that's abnormal. Um, but it was very relieving to have a couple tell me that this is, you know, there's more of us out here. Especially up in North Dakota, when you don't have a lot of people there in the first place. Right. Um, You know, you already feel alone as it is. And I was working a night shift, so I was going nuts by myself. Right. Um, And and if I could cut you off real quick, um, 
that sort of goes back to what I was saying at the very beginning, you know. Um, there are organizations out there like Witch Hat and um, Pagan Pride Project that are actually out there, you, you know, that and are Googleable. Mm -hmm. You know, nowadays, um, you, you know, e e even 20 years ago, it wasn't as people couldn't find each other as readily um, yeah. as they can today. And so um, for those of you out there who are listening to Bitches in the Buckle and you feel like you're the only one, you're not. Um, there are like-minded people out there. You just, just have to, yeah, you just have to find them. And it kind of goes back also to what you were saying about people having to hide, you know, for whatever reason, you know, and it, you don't necessarily even have to be a pastor's kid, you know, it could be, you could lose your job, you could lose your kids, you could lose your house, you know, you could be terrorized by so-called quote-unquote Christians, um, y you know, depending upon where you live in the country and mm -hmm. um, the point of view of the, how radical the point of view of others around you are. And so the idea of having to hide, um, even today, um, as, as much strides as we as um, pagan people have made, um, there's still so much more work to do mm -hmm. and, you know, there's still people out there that have to hide. Oh, and, yeah. And, and, and so that's why I really strongly encourage people that A, you're not alone, B, there are organizations out there that can help, and um, C, Google them. Google them. Um, and definitely there's a lot of podcasts besides ours, I can tell you. Um, there's a great northern podcast, which is done by Thomas uh, Thomas Putton uh, for the North Dakota and the northern area. Um, uh, Minnesota, I can tell you, in Minneapolis they have some. Bemidji, they have some. Uh, well, of course, Bemidji is, you know, they have three college colleges besides the, well, two colleges outside of the Oak Hills Bible College. Um, but you have a Kiss lot my of pagan ass. Kiss my pagan ass, exactly. Yeah. And now we're not, that's not a suggestion, it actually is the name of the podcast. It's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it really is, I mean, for me when I was a kid, I would always have these really vivid dreams. Okay. Which is the first, you know, onset of being psychic. Right. And the first thing I'd want to do is tell my parents, hey, guess what dream I had last night? And they're like, would you just stop telling us your dreams? We really don't want to hear them. You know, that's a little too much. So I usually have these things about vampires chasing me and hunting me down and me like doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer, you know? It's pretty awesome. But it was the... Sidebar. I'm sorry. I keep on cutting you I off. I love Buffy! <laughs> love Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Sidebar. This is actually true. Um... Xander from Buffy the Vampire Slayer got arrested in Boise, Idaho. For stealing uh, potatoes. No. <laughs> no, he was, at, he was at a con. He was at a Comic-Con. Oh, jeez. Um, uh, they uh, actually uh, have some Comic-Cons in Boise? Well, well, yeah, I mean, they have them all over. They even have them here in Oklahoma, you know. Well, I know Oklahoma, but Idaho? Hey, Anyway, of course, he was probably there to sign autographs and take pictures with people, but um, he got arrested um, this past week for, um, for being drunk in the hotel and for breaking a decorative dish. Sh -sh 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 <laughs> he broke a decorative dish. I don't know what the decorative dish did to him, but... Um, Here's hoping that um, Xander from um, and, and he's when you had, learn your lesson, do not break decorative dishes. And you know, Idaho. you know, they are not going to fly at you, and they are not flying saucers. They are completely stained dishes, and you put food on them. Right. Thank you, Xander. But nothing will compare to Keeper Sutherland taking down a Christmas tree in a hotel lobby, drunken love, um, drunken. Drunken Kiefer Sutherland taking down a Christmas tree. YouTube that shit and laugh your ass off. But anyways... You should post it on What the Fuck Wednesday. 
<laughs> Seriously, folks, we have WTF Wednesday. Check it out. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, um but yeah, here, here's hoping that he gets better and because he's had um issues with substance abuse and uh, in the past. So I'm sorry that was a little sad. That's all right. That's what this show's we about. Buffy. We love Buffy. <laughs> At least I'm more of the original Buffy. I'm not much of for the uh, shows. Blech. But point being, um, I would always have these really whacked out dreams. And then they told me to stop, you know, to stop doing it. So I started putting up dream catchers in my room, which of course quickly started being pulled down, which I didn't know why, because up in Minnesota, dream catchers were natural. You know, Native American culture, it was very, you know, people would make them for me. Right. Which is pretty cool that I'd get them made. <laughs> it was made out of yarn. Mm. I was really pretty. Purple yarn. Thank you. Um, with that being said, um, moved to Fargo. Um, kind of got into the gothic music. The, uh, um, you know, Isis Astarte from, uh, um, what was the... I'm not very familiar with Incubus gothic. Succubus. I've, I, I, I've heard of Incubus the band, but I... I... In, Succubus Incubus. It's, a, it's a different than Incubus, which is like a rock. Oh, okay. I'm not very familiar with that at all. Um, basically what it is was a, like a big hair rock, you know, not rockabilly, it was like goth, all black, but very pagan. Um, back from the 80s. It was a big 80 band. But I got big into that, and had, on my way, speaking about cons, on my way to the con, that's when I found out my dragon. Um, we were driving, and I was the only girl in the car. And I was my turn to drive, and you know how some guys can be when it comes to women drivers. Mm. And I'm a good driver. I really am. I've only had one speeding ticket on my record. Um, but what happened was there was this metal fender in the middle of the road where I'm driving, and everybody's, like, swerving on the highway, and I'm, like, sitting here, oh, shh, talky mushrooms. We're going to hit this fender if I don't do something. And so I swerved. And this is in my car, my little Honda uh, Civic at the time that I had. I miss Lucky. Um, but I move it just perfectly to where our, the front end wheels just nick off the front of the, the side of the road. And we stopped. But I felt like something coming. You know when you see those two cars racing in the uh, in the drag strip and they have those parachutes that pop out? Mm -hmm. The slow down? I felt my par like a parachute pop out of my back. Uh -huh. And it felt like I was slowing down. Um Two seconds later, a semi truck passes by. Wow. If I had reacted any differently, we'd have been hit not just the metal fender, we'd have been hit by the truck. Wow. Which tells me that there was a guide somewhere. And Absolutely. that the spirit in me was just opening the parachute or my wings for the first time. To slow it to down. To slow it down, which right. is not normal for your wings to open when you're first finding out about them that quickly. Um, but a lady at the con, uh, this was at Anime Iowa, told me that I needed to bring my wings back in because they were filling up the building. I said, what do you mean? And she goes, you don't know? I said, no, I, I really don't. Uh, you're a dragon. But I thought dragons had, well, no, that's not true. But never mind. Go ahead. I'm well, sorry. they do have big wings. They do. You're right. They compensate me. For the right. wings. Yeah, that was compensation. Right. Long, big wings, long tail. Right. Uh, but she explained to me, and she got me into the animal messages, where I, but when I came back to Fargo, I got the animal messages and the tarot cards. Um, but she told me a lot um, by doing a layout. And she was probably the coolest person. I ended up volunteering my whole time there, paying $300 to volunteer my whole weekend. It was great. Uh, thank you, Mama Bear. I don't even remember your name. I just know her as Mama Bear because she looked like a bear. Uh, but that's pretty much where I came down here. And um, before I met you guys, you and Chris, I was the day before. I basically had been talking to move back up to northern North Dakota because I was. I didn't know where I was gonna go, and I had been pretty much going into nature's treasures yeah they were great people but they're there to do a job they're vendors right and i got one of their blue road opening things and i basically put put, it, put on there i said either open a road here or close it completely and let me go back up to north dakota because i already been talking to a friend about moving back up there 
And uh, luckily for me, um, I called, looked up on the meetup site and saw the chanting and decided to come out that next day. Um, but you might say the ritual worked because it really did open the uh, open the path. Right on. So that that might you might say that put the firm believer um, into it. And my mom tried to, my mom and I actually recently, about a year ago, I call that recent, but an argument like this is pretty recent, had a knockout drag out fight. She asked me where Athena was my whole time. I said, Athena's not my matron goddess, but you're insulting my husband now. I'll tell you, God wasn't sure as hell there. You know, basically I was saying, where was God? And she was like, where was, it? Where was Athena? I said, well, I can tell you where Tyr was. He was giving me enough power to move on and go every day. Because Tyr lets, you know, shit happens, but you move on. That's a battlegrounds mentality. And I've been coming up more of a collective when it comes to religion because I can, I see that there's a lot of connection. There's, everything yeah. is connected. Everything is one. You know, when we talk about gods and goddesses and... Um, and, and this is a little bit of paganism 101 for those of you that are um, are perhaps new to the um, to the religion or are um, are curious about it. This is kind of a paganism 101 um, as as described by Stephen. Um, it is my opinion that um, gods and goddesses are mere energy. Um, for instance, um, one of my pagan gods is Ganesha. Um, when people pray to Ganesha, when people worship Ganesha, um, Ganesha takes on an energy form. Um, and, but that energy form, in my opinion, is part of a greater collective, um, energy form that we as humans call God. Um, the only reason why we have things that are called gods and goddesses is because of, you know, um, because of where we are in life. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the gods and goddesses were created around um, farming. Um, a lot of the gods and goddesses were created because we didn't understand things. And so we had to put a name on it, and so we created gods or goddesses surrounding that. But and so when we when we created names for them, we ended up. I can move over, Chris. Oh, okay. So when we created names for them and we started worshiping them, it is my opinion. Um, and again, if you disagree or agree with this, by all means, um, comment down below. Um, when we create, when we create, when we focus our energy on something, it takes shape and form. And if it's God energy then it becomes part of the greater collective of God energy that has been around since we as humans decided that there was something beyond ourselves out there, which, uh, you, you know, prehistoric times. So, um, so you, you know, when you say, when your mother said, well, where was Athena? And you said, well, where was God? <sighs> it was more of the, you know, when you're lashing out and someone's pushing you, you know, where was God when all this was happening? Because if God, it, and the way I saw it was like, if God saw my dad as that good of a servant to him, why was he letting all this happen to him and his daughter? And then what I put was, you know, where was God when all this happened? She was like, well, where was Athena? I said, well, Athena's not really my matron goddess, but I will tell you, that is my husband's matron goddess, and I do not let it. You can walk all over me all that you want, but you start walking over my husband, we are going to have issues. Right. And that's where I put my foot down. I said, my god uh, and goddess are totally different because I lean towards a, he, he, has, he comes from the Greek uh, Hellenistic. Hel Hellenistic aspect, and I'm, I'm more of a collectic. Um, 
And as uh, you once told me when I was working with the uh, Athena Society, don't be ex- uh, don't be upset if you get a lot of gods and goddesses coming to talk to you, saying, hey, you know, you and I are all right, but, you know, mention me to this person or mention me to so-and-so. But since I did that, I actually made a lot of friends that are on the deity side that they still come, you know, even though they don't, they're not my matron or patron, they right. still come and hang out. And, right. And my favorite line from True Blood, and I know you haven't seen it, but I love this line, is just because Jesus and I have decided to go see other people doesn't mean he and I still don't talk every now and then. Right. Thank yeah. you, Lala. <laughs> um, and, and and that's the other thing. Um, I, I guess my my bigger point um, as far as gods and goddesses go, for those of you that um, are listening that um, perhaps come from the Christian faith and are curious um, about you know um, about deities and the worshiping of other deities besides one deity. Um, oh gosh. It's poly polytheist. Is, is that mm-hmm. right? is that the word? Yes. Poly, thank you. It's not that you know. It, it, it's not necessarily. Again, this is paganism 101 as interpreted by Stephen. It's not that my God can beat up your God. It's that your God and my God are the entire are the same God. It's just a huge collective, and we take bits and pieces. Actually, we create bits and pieces of who this God energy is, and we put it in the collective, and we've been doing that since the beginning of time, um, or since we discovered that um, there was something outside of ourselves. And if you disagree with that, um, by all means, comment on that, because um, that's Paganism 101 as interpreted by um, Stephen of Bibbs, and I'm just one person. Mm-hmm. But um, that's where I come from. Exactly. And, I mean, I have a little different take on it, that there are individual aspects, because if God said have no other gods before me, he's already making it plural. I mean, not to quote the Bible on that one, but it is a, it is a theory on that. But um, this is, to me, if for those who are turning in that are Christian, um, please forgive where I stand on that because I've been, I, I have been hurt pretty bad, and I know a lot of pagans who have been in the same situation. But I, I don't hate Christians. I love them. In fact, I, you know, most of them. One of my closest friends. Um, not to sound racist or anything. Not to sound uh, religious. <laughs> I, I, I come up with new words like religious or animalists mm-hmm. or religionist. religionists or uh, stuff like that. But, um, you know, it's just one of those things is you've got to find out what religion fits you. Absolutely. And, and I think that that, um, that goes more to your point and your story tonight is mm-hmm. that... Um, mm-hmm. You know, I I went through my whole thing of, you know, figuring out what religion meant to me and, you know, how I fit into the larger um, um, idea of spirituality. I did that and, um, you know, I studied world religions and, you know, you had your journey and Chris had his journey as well. And so don't be afraid. Um, that, that's another thing for those of you that are out there that are just now be coming into, you know, I wonder what, um, paganism, Wiccan, Wiccan, um, heathenism, earth-based religions are. Don't be afraid to research it and try it on. And if it fits you, it fits you. If it doesn't fit you, you know, move on. And if a little bit fits, keep it. If a little bit doesn't, it's just like a, it, you know, it's like a, making it, you know, a recipe. If you like a little bit of seasoning on this side, plop it in. And if you like a little bit of bacon with it, add it in. Right. And, you know, find the bacon that best fits you. Canadian. Just saying. Oh, just grease it up and put it in the breakfast <laughs> Um, But before we go, I do want to leave with a little bit of a joke. And, and just ahead of time, this is what it's meant to be. It's meant to be funny. Because um, we are so about she, that. We are about that. So mm. this actually was posted on the Cauldron. Um, uh, it's a meetup place on Facebook for uh, Druids, Pagans, and uh, uh, Wiccans. Uh, but this is entitled, Another P- a Pagan Goes to Hell. Uh, a pagan dies, and to his great surprise, he stands to, finds himself standing before uh, before some pearly gates, and the pagan asks, Where am I? 
Peter says, you're at the gates of heaven. And Peter says, I don't believe in heaven. Peter frowns, you're one of those pagans, aren't you? And he goes, yes, I believe I'm in the wrong place. I'm supposed to go to the Summerland. Peter says, sorry, we have took over the Summerland, and it's temporary closed for remodeling. What should I do now? Peter says, well, since we don't allow pagans in heaven, you're just going to have to go to hell. Just follow the path that leads downwards and to the left. Pagan walks down to hell, and where, he, where the gates are standing open, he walks in and finds beautiful meadows, happy animals, and clear streams of water. He walks on in and begins to exploring, and after a few minutes, a courtly gentleman walks up and bows to him and, polite, and politely, Hello, I'm Satan. You must be the guy St. Peter called me about. Are you a pagan? Why, yes, yes I am. What's going to happen now? Satan says, well, fishing's pretty good, and if you're, in, if you're into that sort of thing, uh, a little down, there's a little refreshment stand down the road, and I believe there's pagan meeting grounds right above the next hill. But suddenly, a hole opens up, and in the sky above, a yawning chasm directly underneath it, and the stench of sulfur fills the air, and the hundreds and hundreds into uh, hundreds of screaming, tortured souls drop down into a flaming pit, which immediately closes up with a thud. Peter hardly believing uh, the pagan hardly believing what just what he just saw asked satan and what was that satan rolls his eyes oh just ignore them they're christians they wouldn't have it any other way hmm. we love christians we love christians <laughs> but <laughs> maybe a better idea of what happens when you go to heaven or hell might be a little better yeah. Um, because, you know, one person put it succinctly, if there is truly a hell, and from a Christian perspective, and God is really that omnipotent, do you think he'd keep everybody there for all, for all eternity? Good, Good question. question. Uh, With, and that being said, and I we apologize. We are going to stop, stop reading up on Christians. <laughs> We will um, delete this part for, for We more. don't have to delete it. We can leave it in. But, um, um a couple of things, um. Yeah, we're, we're wrapping it up. Um, um, I, I guess we need to talk about what's happening... Next week. Next week, and I have an idea um, for next week's show, and I want to toss it out there. Um, pagans and sexuality. Yay! Oh, my favorite! Sex. We love sex! <laughs> yes, it is! And Chris, uh, for those who are who are turning in, we are not beating up on Christians. That, was, that thing was just meant to be a joke. And I'm sure there's a lot of pagan Christian jokes, or vice versa, Christian to pagan jokes. Um, right. So. Um, but I was thinking about pagans and sexuality because there's a lot of misconceptions out there. Oh, yeah. Um, and there's a lot of stuff that um, we can set this record straight on and, um, and we can talk about. And uh, I'm thinking bringing in some, uh, you know, salt and pepper and... Salt and pepper. Yeah. And not like the color of your beard there. Oh, are you talking about um, um, salt and pepper? About sex, yes. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes. So that's what we're going to do next week. We're going to talk about pagans and sexuality with a little bit of salt and pepper. Um, and Cinderella will cut it up one time at the very beginning. So. Just one time? <laughs> Cinderella cut it up one time. Just one time. This is the one time. <laughs> So, with that being said, we want to go ahead and say thank you for turning in to Bibs, Bitches in the Buckle. Right. Um, is there anything going on for you this week that you want to talk about? Um, no, but we did forget our uh, uh, shameless self-promotions. I know that you're about to do a reading on someone tonight. Yes, reading. Um, I'm doing a reading tonight. Um, both um, Dragon and I, or I should say Joe and I. Dragon. You can call me Dragon if you um, like. Dragon and I are available for parties. Um, I know that it's coming up to Halloween. We are available for parties, um, get-togethers. Um, you can either email us at bibs.okc at gmail.com, comment on the comments down below, or you can reach me at traveler at travelingtarot.com, or you can reach Joe at... Uh, Lady Drayson at claw, C-L-A-W, dash writings.com. 
Um, so we're available for parties, um, get-togethers. Um, um, I have a guided meditation class coming up this Wednesday night. If you're in Oklahoma City, um, Oklahoma, um, I, I'm doing a guided meditation on fire this and week. I will be starting doing some classes down, not not immediately, but hopefully we'll be doing some classes down at um, uh, in Norman here soon. So okay. on Saturdays. Cool. So guided meditation um, this. This Wednesday night at 7 o'clock at the Labyrinth Temple, which is at 417 Northwest 25th Street in Oklahoma City. Um, please show up um, at 7 o'clock because we try to start on time. Um, it's free to the public. Um, a love donation will be taken at the end of class. Um, if, you, if you can't pay, don't worry about it. Show up anyway. And we will welcome and invite your energy. So that's this Wednesday night at 7 o'clock at the Labyrinth Temple, a guided meditation on fire. And having Stephen do it is like having Barry Manilow sing to you. So it's very, if you don't always meditate, you at least get a good relaxation moment. Right. Um, let's see, anything else going on that we need to talk about? That was a compliment, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, Sorry. Um, Sorry, that was a little. Tough. Oh, one. Oh, I, hang on, one more thing before we close. Um, Skepticon. Um, okay. Skepticon is a day long um science versus um spirituality um kind of a event. It's going on at the University of Central Oklahoma up in Edmond. I will be part of a panel up there. Um. Um, there will be three uh, people who are on the um, psychic metaphysical side, and there will be three people on the science side, and we will have a be and we will have a debate. I've been promised that it will not de um, it will not devolve into a Jerry Springer moment. Um, in fact, it will be very very smart um, and very very insightful. Um, it is free for um, UCO students, um, and it's ten dollars. Um, for um, the general public. For more information on Skepticon, which is this Saturday from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m., I believe my panel is at 3.30, uh -huh. um, but it's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. If you want more information on Skepticon, um, um, go to their event page. All you have to do on Facebook is look up Skepticon. S S-K-E-P-T-I-O-N. No, 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 It's S-K-E-P, S-K-E-P-T-O-K-O-N. That, that, um, that is S-K-E-P-T-O-K-O-N. Um, on Facebook, Skepticon. Um, and I'd love to have you come out there. Um, there's going to be some very fascinating debates going on all day long. Um, and it's sure to be a great time. So I invite you all to come out there and join me. Sounds good to me. I'll be there. Not really. We have a game. We have game that day, so we'll be doing some D and D. D and D. We'll have our we'll have our own Skepticon. Right on. All right. I guess that's but it. With that being said, um, last but not least, anybody who would like to. Um, uh, blog wise, I, I have been doing some training on my uh, blog. Claw-writings.com. If you do participate every two weeks, I'm doing a drawing for a person to get a free tarot reading with me. It's a five free call, uh, free five card layout, uh, just to participate. And not everybody's gonna win, but uh, every time you participate, it's one name in the drawing. Right. Um, but that's only one time per day. So like you participate several times that day, you know, you don't get several drawings. But right. uh, just letting you know for those who would like a free reading someday. Uh, Keep that in mind. And um, for anything and everything um, that I have going on, by all means, go to TravelingTarot.com and check me out. Or um, And I have all of my social media links um, as buttons on the bottom of every page. So um, check me out there. So is that it? With that being said, thank you for turning into Bibs and... Thank you. Uh, my name is Steven. My name is Dragon. And I, you've been listening to you. Bitches, Bitches in, in the Buckle. I got my bibs on. I got my bibs on.